emotional resilience. What is it and how do we cultivate it? In this video, I'm gonna talk about my personal experiences and how I cultivated emotional resilience for myself. Disclaimer, I am not a mental health professional or a licensed therapist. These are just my observances and experiences. I will have each of the 24 points timestamped in the comments below. This is going to be a longer video on my channel, so if you want to grab a snack or a drink, settle in, and let's jump into the 24 ways in which I cultivated emotional resilience. First, let's establish the definition of resilience, which is the capacity to withstand or to recover quickly from difficulties. So. Emotional resilience then is the ability to withstand or overcome or ride the wave of our own emotions. Emotional resilience does not mean to numb or to refuse to feel our emotions. I feel like that's a really important part. <laughs> Point number one is to learn to become an observer of your emotions. There is a certain level of detachment with this. It's kind of like you're watching yourself within yourself. You're like, watching your emotions as they happen. Oh wow, I'm feeling this way right now. When you detach from them, it kind of brings the intensity of them down. It, it can be kind of like an experiment at that point. You're just like observing what's going on and not letting it dictate whether that's good or bad. You're just observing. Point number two is to ask yourself, what is this emotion trying to tell me? It's not always easy to apply logic to emotions because emotions just kind of are, they're there. They color our lives and logic wants to know why and sometimes there isn't always a why we feel a certain way, we just do. But it can help in what I've learned in my experience to ask, what is this emotion trying to tell me? We know from psychology and from various studies that have come out that an emotion will come up when it is asking you to change something about your life. And I'm talking more about the quote unquote negative emotions like anger, fear, sadness. It's, it's telling us something, some need is not being met right now. And the emotion is a signal for you to change that or to act on it or reflect. I have found that trying to know a reason why tends to diffuse the emotion sometimes. So that's why I added it to the list. Point number three is to learn how to pause before becoming reactionary. I feel like so many people, they feel mad, they feel sad, they feel anything and they wanna act on it right away. They wanna lash out at the nearest person to them. And oftentimes all that does is create chaos. It doesn't serve us, it doesn't make us feel good. Once the emotion has passed, I mean, how many times have we regretted our actions because we were mad or sad or whatever. So I find that pausing when I feel angry or pausing in general before I react emotionally helps me to process the emotion a little more and ask myself, is it worth acting on this? Point number four is learn how to feel your emotions. Like I said earlier in the video, emotions aren't always logical. They're kind of there. We feel the way we feel and we may not always know why. It's so important to integrate an emotion by feeling it deeply and letting that be okay. Sometimes it can be difficult to feel an emotion because I know there are plenty of people out there who repress. Repressing emotions is never good because they will always come out sideways. It will affect your life. It will add to your stress levels and your emotions will deal with you one day if you don't deal with them yourself. I don't mean that to be threatening, but they're gonna be there and they're gonna be in a pressure cooker unless you find ways to release them a little bit or alchemize them. Because once we feel an emotion, it already has begun to change. Point number five is to treat life as if it's a game. If you have the perspective that everything in life is a game, you could even say it's a simulation. I, I wouldn't go that far, but I find that characterizing it in that way makes it so it's almost like a little bit more fun. Like, oh, I'm feeling this way right now. Let's pretend I'm in a video game or I'm in a game, life's a game. How does this play into my, my quest right now? How does this add to the lore of my life? How, what is this about? I feel like that helps to diffuse the feeling as well or to put like a fun spin on it. Point number six is to become comfortable with the truth. This is one of the points that I feel like is probably one of the most difficult to work with because a lot of people spend their lives outrunning the truth. People don't wanna know how they really feel or what they really think. So that's why at the beginning of the video, I said that numbing an emotion is not emotional resilience. Psychology tells us that if we try to numb one emotion, we numb all of our emotions and we don't want that. We want our lives to be full of color 
and it's gonna be full of ups and downs, just like emotions are, and that's okay. But I find that when you know the truth of something, the truth of an emotion, why is this coming up? Why do I feel this way? Or just feeling it, the truth almost absolves it, or it absolves whatever's going on behind that emotion, and you can move forward. Point number seven is pretend you are Daenerys Targaryen. Nothing can get to you. Or if Daenerys Targaryen doesn't work for you, it can be any favorite fictional character that you have or powerful person in history. I find that sometimes emotions can make you, it can rob you of your feeling of self-worth. And if you affix yourself, if you associate yourself with a powerful person in history or in fiction, that immediately like, it makes you sit up straighter. It makes you feel like, no, no, I've got this actually. I'm not a victim, I can do this. I remember that when I lived in New York City, I did this when it was really hot outside, I would pretend that I was Daenerys walking through the deserts of Essos and that I had to make it through. And that just, <laughs> same with the other point of trying to make it a game, it puts this, I don't know, mythical spin on the course of your life and it makes it fun and some flavor, a little spice, if you will. If you are enjoying the video so far, please consider liking and subscribing. I would greatly appreciate it. Point number eight is if the feeling is too intense, then redirect. Sometimes the things we feel are too overwhelming. They're too much. We can't deal with them in, in the moment. In those instances, I find it's really helpful to pivot, to redirect, do something else. You can come back to it later. You can come back to whatever's bothering you. Watch a show that you like, go for a walk, read a book, do something else to temporarily alleviate the intensity of whatever it is that you're feeling. Point number nine is to channel intense emotions into something else. So like this could be working out, painting a portrait, playing an instrument, going for a walk. Make something with the emotions that you're feeling. Some of the greatest works of art in history have come from people being in a major bout of sadness. Great joy also. We don't have to just talk about the supposed bad emotions. We can also talk about the good ones. So if you're in joy, if you're in love, make something with it because that enriches the world, it enriches your life and the people around you. Point number 10 is have a strong support system, but don't treat them as if they are your therapist. No one wants to hear you complain about the same things all the time and not do anything about them. Or maybe that's just me personally. It is totally fine to have people in your life to talk to about what is going on and it is encouraged. We are wired for connection, we want to have deep relationships and, and connections, whether that's friendship, romance, whatever, we need those in our lives. And it's so important to have that support, to have people around you who are gonna tell you, no, I, I will be here with you through this, you've got this. But I just wouldn't go the extra mile by treating them like a therapist. So like calling them up every single time something bad happens or it can, it can, be a burden for them. So it needs to be a balance. Point number 11 is to try journaling. Journaling is a fantastic way to get clearer on how you feel. It's a place that is all your own. You can go internal, you can write as much as you want. It's so important to have a place where you can unload everything that no one will see, no one will judge you. That's what's so beautiful about journals. I love journals, I have had one my entire life pretty much. It's just so nice to have a place to come to where it's just me and a pen and paper and I can write about whatever I want. Point number 12 is know that all things pass. This is also important with another point where I said to learn how to pause. Emotions, unless you suffer from a condition where you have diagnosed depression or problems with anxiety or a myriad of other things, emotions will eventually pass. If emotions do get stuck, I think that is what is known as a mood. And if you're finding that you're in a mood very often, that can take some more work than just the everyday passing ups and downs of emotions in general but all things pass with time, with the proper care, with the proper cultivation, with knowing yourself, with going inward, and knowing that can be comforting. If I'm saying, I just feel really, really, really down right now, knowing that one day I will not feel this way anymore, one day this will pass, there's a, I can take this pain and, and put it into something. Whatever reason I'm going to affix to it, knowing one day the light will return, I will feel happy again, 
is a great comfort for me. Point number 13 is to come from a giving place. If you are too into your emotions, it can help to do something nice for someone else. We can become so self-absorbed, so self-obsessed with everything that's going on in our own lives that we forget that everyone around us is also going through something. And I have found that if I'm feeling particularly frustrated or you know, however a certain day, if I try to do something nice for someone else or say something nice to someone, that makes me feel better. And I think we've all been there where in these times when we have felt really up and really emotionally like, oh, I feel good today. What do you immediately want to do? You want to give that to other people. You want to share that with other people. So when you come from a giving place, even if you feel like crap, it's almost like it, it shifts your circumstances internally by giving to someone. Point number 14 is to breathe. Breathe. Very simple, can be difficult to do, especially for me. Um, I have a difficult time breathing deeply sometimes. A lot of people can have this issue, especially with anxiety, because our breath is so deeply connected to how we feel and our sense of security. When babies are born, they just wail and wail and wail because they have no perception of of uh, life at that point that tells them to tamper down on what is their feeling in the moment. All they know is I need this right now, somebody needs to help me. And so breath is so intricately connected to all of that, who we are, our life force. And breathing deeply can put you in line with whatever it is that you're feeling. It can calm your nervous system. It can stabilize your emotions. It can slow your thoughts down. Breathing is so incredibly important. Point number 15 is go to a therapy. <laughs> so after you've talked to your friends about it, then go to a therapist, talk to a licensed therapist. They can help you. I know so many people, especially men I've encountered in my life, they don't want to go to therapy. And again, I know it's scary, but that's the basic message of this point is just go to therapy. It might surprise you, you might enjoy it. It can help you to deal with whatever it is that you're going through. Point number 16, get yourself a little treat. <laughs> In the same vein, know how to take care of yourself. One of my favorite things to do most days is to walk over to my favorite cafe and get a matcha latte, an iced matcha latte. There's just something about it. It makes me feel like a little giddy, like a little bubbly. It makes me feel good. <laughs> it helps you to have that spike of, yeah, I feel good right now. And if you know how to take care of yourself, if you know how to pull yourself out of a funk, whether that's getting a little treat or like taking a bath or lighting a candle that you enjoy, that's also very valuable. Point number 17 is to cultivate empathy. Empathy is something that is incredibly important because it is what connects us to one another. Oftentimes people don't empathize with people until they've gone through a similar situation to what the person's going through. So if you've lost a loved one, like I have, my dad died when I was 13 years old. Whenever I meet somebody who also lost a parent, I empathize on a very deep level because I have been there. And it's important to cultivate empathy for all beings as much as we can, to have that presence to sit with people in their pain and to lend an ear if possible, if you're able to. It's a, it, this is another sort of difficult point to do, but it's one that I think is probably one of the most important. Point 18 is to know that you are not alone. So many people, when we're going through tough times, feel totally alone. And I've been there. I know what that feels like. It's not fun. But when you understand that so many people are going through the same emotions, the same state that you are in, it can help lessen the load a little bit, especially when you understand that we're all connected. I guarantee you, if you spoke to any single person on the street, they would tell you tales of great sorrow, of great anger and loss and great joy and great neutrality too, I guess. Everybody has had these ups and downs. So you are not alone in the way that you feel. Point number 19 is no matter what, get back up. Be like one of those, what are they, weeble wobble, don't fall down. Like what are they called? The things that, you know what I mean, they, they never fall over. Be like one of those things. And when you get up, you're sending a signal to the universe, to whatever you wanna call it, your higher self or God, whatever you believe in, that you are still in the game, that you believe in yourself and you are moving forward. Always, always, 
always get up, you can do it, and you will not be a victim to how you feel in the moment. Point number 20, and we're getting to the end of the list here, we're almost there, is to know that you can handle anything. Whatever you place your faith in, whether that's yourself or something else, or a combination of the two, we don't need to get into that topic today. Whatever that is will never give you too much that you can't handle. At least that's what I believe. You can handle anything that comes into your life. It wouldn't be in your life if you couldn't handle it. So having this, this certainty that you can handle anything that comes into your life makes you feel more powerful, it makes you feel capable, and that you can stand up straighter, that you can get through it, and you will get through it. Point 21 is to know that emotions are beautiful. They are what color our lives. They add meaning, they add this quality that's that's difficult to put into words, because again, emotions and logic, it's really hard for them to mix, but you can look at the world through this rosy lens of, wow, I, I just feel so lucky to be here, I feel so joyful that this is my life, or um, even when you're in a low, when, I, when I'm in a low too, that's when I've created some of the art in my life. I mean, that's how I wrote my book. It came from a traumatic experience that I went through a couple of years ago, but I made something with it, which ties into a point I said earlier. But knowing that there is this, mm, I don't know quite how to put it, this melancholy, but also blissful quality to emotions. They're there to teach us. They're there to drive us. They're there to add color to our lives. I mean, what, what would our lives be without feeling? It, they would be empty. Point 22 is to cultivate the sublime daily. What do I mean by that? So I try as much as possible to, whether it's at home or in public or anywhere, if I'm going for a walk, take a few minutes. Usually I'm listening to music at the time, but I don't have to be and just think about what is sublime. What, what is it that brings me this feeling of connection to all things? What is it that makes me feel the best? What is the sublime in my life? And then I, I allow those feelings to pour in and it's just this, again, it's hard to explain this, this blissful, joyful quality that makes me feel grateful and happy to be here. And I think if you can create that for yourself, no matter the circumstances, at least once a day, and really sit in that, I think that just draws more of that to you. And it's good for your own well-being too. If you can create that for yourself, you've already won. Point 23 is to know which emotions are yours or someone else's. I've had this happen to me so many times in my life where I realized, oh, I actually don't feel that way about that at all. That was somebody else's feeling. That's how they were feeling about this thing and I just adopted it for whatever reason. That can really help clear out the emotional clutter if you're like, if you ask yourself, is this actually how I feel about this or was I just told to feel this way? Finally, the last point, point 24, is to know yourself. Now I know that that can be sort of an abstract, like what do you mean by that kind of statement. I find the more that you spend time knowing how you feel, knowing what you believe, what you think, or at least knowing how you think, how you feel, whether you have an open mind or, or a more closed mind, knowing that you process information a certain way, like the number of ways you can know yourself is infinite. There is so much to explore and discover. We are the universe becoming aware of itself. And that is simultaneously exciting and terrifying. And again, I know this is a video from my personal experience. And so knowing myself has been incredibly important in my lifetime. So with all of these points, you know, take what resonates with you, discard the ones that don't. The main message I always wanna keep driving in any of the content I meant, make is to know yourself as deeply as possible. It's important to note that everyone is going to experience this differently. Everybody's going to have different levels of resilience. Everybody's going to have different emotional lives. Some people may not be very emotional at all and others may be, you know, crying over spilled milk, essentially. I don't know why that's the first thing that came to mind, but that's the first thing that came to mind. So the last message I want to leave you with is pause, breathe, move through, embrace, and feel. I wish you well on your emotional resilience journey. I really hope that 
this video was helpful. I'm sure that there are other points I could have talked about, but maybe in the future I will make a part two. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. I have a goal to hit a thousand subscribers in 2024, so that would mean a lot to me if you would do that. Please let me know down below if there are any other video ideas you would like from me, or just let me know how your day is going, what you thought of the video, anything. I'm all ears. This was uh, a labor of love to create. It was definitely something very interesting and um, it's something that I feel like I've been cultivating for a long time. So I hope that it benefited you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.